What's up, everybody? It's me, Chris, again. I'm um, going to talk a couple little boxing things, fights over the weekend. Um, I should have dropped this video yesterday, but to be honest, I went out Saturday night and got really tore up. So, I just yesterday was like a recovery day for me, to be honest. I just was not feeling up to making any videos or anything. Too much Patron, I guess. But anyhow, feeling much better today. Much uh, refreshed and ready to talk a lot of fight stuff this week. MMA and boxing. So, first off, I'm going to give my uh, weekend recap over the Areola, uh, Travis Walker, and Paul Williams fights. A couple other things real quick. Um, Chris Areola got a third round TK over Travis Walker on HBO. Exciting fight. Definitely um, reminds you of why the general public is so, you know, they always say um, boxing goes as, as how the heavyweight division goes. And um, granted, that's not so much the case as it used to be. I think uh, hardcore fans are more into like the lower weight classes, but the mainstream, they're more into heavyweight boxing or, you know, casual fans and Oscar De La Hoya types. Um, but uh, this was a good fight, man. Exciting. The guys were getting hurt, you know, just you always know, like they say in heavyweight boxing, I mean, in any boxing, but particularly in heavyweight, one shot can end it like that. Uh, so Walker came out looking good early using the jab, kind of had Ariel on defensive. Um, Ariola later said he kind of wanted to just see what Walker had. I don't know if that's the case or not, because Walker was dictating the pace of that first round. Um, it was looking effective, landing clean shots. Uh, come the second round, he actually knocked uh, Chris Ariola down um, with the two-punch combination. Ariola took a knee, got right back up. He didn't really look hurt or anything. And then responded, responded by just going after Walker and ended up knocking him down and hurting him really bad. Um, in between the second and third round, once uh, Walker went back to his stool, you could tell. You could just see his eyes in the corner. He was just stunned. I mean, he just looked like he was still kind of out on his feet. Um, so Ariel just rushed him when they came out for the third. Um, clipped him with the big, uh, what was it, a left hook, I believe. Dropped it. The rush stopped it immediately. No need for a count. I agree with him there. Uh, Walker, as I said, even in the corner looked stunned when he came out. Um, he would have just probably got KO'd more um, definitively if the ref would have let it continue on. So props to Ariola. Uh, once again, though, I think he came in heavier than he should have. I think the guy should drop at least another 8 to 10 pounds, maybe. I think he'd be uh, he'd have a lot better movement defensively. It'd help with his footwork, and it would definitely help with his punch output and his speed. Um, other than that, I don't think he's, based on this fight, I don't think he's ready for the Klitschko's, not by a long stretch. You know, um, he wasn't, you know, Walker's jab was bothering him. I think if you kept him away with the jab and uh, big punches behind it, which the Klitschko's both have, they could easily... Um, they could easily win a decision, I believe, but they, it might look like a Vitaly Klitschko of Sam Peter fight, as a matter of fact, if Ariola fought one of those guys. But they could just as well knock him out. I mean, Walker was able to hurt him, and uh, the Klitschkos, I believe, have a lot more power than Walker, although I can't verify that. Um, but uh, Ariola is a very charismatic guy. You can see in his interview afterwards, and he just he has a certain charisma when he fights as well. So um, hopefully he just you know hits the road work like he said he would do, you know, and be a little more disciplined in the gym and outside of it, and. Uh, He'll keep progressing. Uh, next up, we had Paul Williams get a TKO in round eight over Vernal Phillips. Actually, it wasn't in round eight. Um, Vernal Phillips' corner stopped it. Uh, this was a good fight, entertaining. A lot more entertaining than I actually thought it would be. I didn't think it would suck, but it was a really pretty good fight. Um, unfortunately, Williams got caught with a big headbutt in the first round. And you could tell it kind of bothered him. If you looked at him in the corner in between those rounds, he I'm not saying he looked worried or concerned, but he just didn't look as um, confident you know, or as carefree as you would if you didn't have that cut. Um, props to Williams, though. He put he, he applied his game plan, threw a lot of punches, fought good on the inside, fought good on the outside, mixed up his punches well, a lot of head shots, a lot of good body shots. That definitely took the steam out of Phillips. Um, I have to give props to Bernal Phillips, though. I said on my previous video, I'm not a fan of his, but the guy definitely earned my respect in this fight. You know, I, he got tired toward the end. He was taking a, a pretty good beating, you know, when his corner stopped it. He didn't object, object to the stoppage, so I think he understands he's cool with it. You know, he didn't have a problem with it necessarily. But the guy was getting battered around. He tried to keep up with Williams. I think a couple of the reasons why he uh, faded late, obviously the body shots and the accumulation of punches, but also he was trying to keep up with Williams' pace. And, you know, at 39 years old, I just don't think he can do that. There's not a lot of guys out there that can keep up with the Williams' pace. Only maybe a Margarito or a Clotty, something like that. But, you know, Phillips didn't go down. He could have quit. I think a lot of fighters in that position may have just stayed on the stool. Not a lot, but there are fighters at uh, Phillips' age, you know, knowing that they're probably going to win the fight, might have stayed on the stool, but he didn't, so props to him for that. Uh, Williams at 154, 
looked great as he has at 147 and 158. I'm not sure who he's going to fight next. Um, I'd like to see him fight Margarito. Apparently Margarito doesn't want it. I don't know. I'd like to see him fight Claudi. I'd like to see him fight Berto. Um, at 154, I'd like to see him fight Forrest. Bernard Forrest, that is. Or maybe uh, Sergio Martinez. There's a lot of options out there. Maybe 160, Kelly Pavlik. I don't know. But the guy's definitely um, living up to the definition of pound for pound because he's fighting in numerous weight divisions and looking good doing so. Uh, real quick, a couple other things I want to talk about. Uh, Jesus Sojo Karras got an easy win on Friday night over Hickett Lau. Um, I'd like to see this guy. He's looking pretty good. He's on a pretty good roll right now. I'd like to see him fight maybe a Kermit Cintro next year or a Carlos Quintana. You know, good little Mexican-Puerto Rican fights. Those always get the fans pop, um, hyped up. Just to see if uh, Karras is just beating bums or if he's really, you know, stepping up that ladder. So, But he looked pretty impressive, although the opposition wasn't much to... Um, I don't know. It just wasn't the best opposition, but either way, you know, he's on a good roll. Uh, also, uh, Margarito Mosley finally got made for sure for January. Can't wait. Glad uh, the posturing by Margarito, it worked for him because he ended up getting more money. So, you know, I can't blame the guy, you know, for doing what he did. Uh, so, the fight's going to happen. That's all that matters. That's the most important thing. Um, can't wait to see it. And uh, if Margarito does win, I'm not saying he's going to win, but if he does, I hope he fights Paul Williams sometime next year. That fight definitely needs to be made. Um, also, another fight that got made uh, recently, Angulo, Alfred Angulo against Ricardo Mayorga for next year, too. Really looking forward to that fight. I think I mentioned earlier this year after his Angulo's fight, or his last fight, I thought that that would be a good matchup for him, and I think it will be. Um, I'm not going to say what I think of that fight too much, but I, I'm expecting a war, and it should be pretty darn entertaining as long as it lasts. So. Anyhow, that's it for now. i got to um, make a video for De La Hoya Pacquiao and a bunch of other things, so... I'll hit you up later. Oh, real quick, though. Uh, shouts out to some of these other guys who's got shows on here. 97 Rough. Uh, there Will Be Blood Boxing. That's his uh, show. Um, we got Buddha Side, Body Bangers, Rob Riddle, Cross the Line Boxing. Um, there's a couple other ones, man. I, I can't even think of them all right now off the top of my head. To be honest, I'll give the other guys a shout out. But uh, Blood Boxing, um, 17 Brand, if I think the, the guy's name is. Anyways, if you haven't checked out any of these guys' shows, um, check them out. They've got good stuff, you know, so... I'm uh I'm out for now. I'm gonna go do another video real quick. Um till then, later.